Hello, welcome back to Glenn Sushi Life Noding. In this episode, I want to talk about animation notes and spare talks, um, especially in topic of making procedural animations. So the idea is simple. Um, you want to have a bunch of same objects or like instance of objects and you want to be able to drive all these objects um, just like using the transformations, locations, rotations and scale. So kind of like an array of objects and usually when dealing with a lot of objects like this you want to use uh, drivers or eventually you want to use particles instancing but particles is a different uh, story altogether so normally if you start maybe you tend to get to use animation nodes because animation nodes have uh, something really cool called object instancer Okay, recently Spreadshop also updated its object instancing, but I'll show it to you later. Let's say we have a, a torus, and we're gonna instance this torus. And let me actually turn this from always to this one. Okay, and uh, I want to instance this guy, and I want to distribute based on its matrices. So this matrices sounds really scary, but don't worry, it's just like a transform. And this node gives you ability to quickly put it in a grid, in a circle, or based on another mesh or spiral. So, and then you want to um, use matrix output very, very quickly. So these three nodes connected together, it's gonna give you what you want. So for example, grid, if we plug this into the instance, it's gonna create this get length, get the total length of this matrices data. And this is the objects, and we want to arrange it and distribute it uh, using the matrices. So we have a grid, we have an array of torus, and we can also increase it in the z directions to get more torus. So there's this master master torus that you you probably want to hide so we're just gonna deal with the instance file save as i call it ansv procedural anim so even though this is basics but it's a really really powerful you can arrange this in the circle spiral mesh we don't deal with mesh for now maybe maybe let's just read for now okay so torus and from here what can we do with it so we arrange it in the in the positions initial positions and we want to play around with it you can normally use offset so we have a lot of offset nodes in animation nodes where is it Oh, okay, not offset, it's called fall off. So all these nodes is something that you can have a look one by one. Uh, we can start with uh, something like wiggle. Oh, that's the fall off. Actually, we need the matrix offset. Because we are dealing with the matrix data or the transform data. Right, so we need to put this matrix offset between the original initial position and where we're gonna randomize it or offset it rather so let's say I want to push it in the y direction so we have two position of animations you can actually have more not just one you can have more so you can translate it into different position and you can play around with the fall off. This is how you kind of animate. So it's moving from original 0, 0, 0 position, push 10 units to the side and another 10 units to the side. And you can add fall off. So things like wiggle. So now the initial positions is uh, already in this wiggle position and we can have another position here where it's, another, it's in another position 
and you can wiggle between the two if you randomize the seed so so we can actually adjust the follow I think I actually need another one here so this is in a different wiggle positions so we just play around with the follow -up. but if you just get started okay don't worry about this multiple follow -up. just use a single single follow -up. Um, and normally instead of using the follow -up, we, we want to have random position on the second one so use a random vector and we get the total number of the objects plug it into the count this goes into the vector so we are randomizing the positions and we can still adjust the follow from initial positions into the final positions and we can also have random Euler to randomize the rotations and yeah something like that and you can increase the scale just randomize it and you can adjust the follow so that's a uh, give you the basic of procedural animation you are creating um, some kind of node setup or like a drivers that drive the animations of these objects um, of course eventually you want to be able to have maybe like some kind of target to control these objects um, that's something you will eventually learn uh, we're gonna get to there so that's with animation nodes and if you are happy with the animations actually if we use the wiggle we go follow and we plug in the frame into the evolutions and the follow into this guy we're gonna have animations it's a uh, not really super exciting but still it's a uh, it's pretty interesting and if you want to bake it with animation or this super super simple you just uh, go to under overview there's a bake keyframe it's gonna bake the animations for you so this is if you are using animation nodes you can also animate the scale make random uh, animations so that will work I'm gonna hit escape to stop it we have animations you can go to graph editor and this is all the animations of the, the torus okay so let's actually have a look at spread chalk so let me save this create another new scene if you are doing it with spread chalk it's suddenly a slightly different way of thinking you can use a uh, mesh viewer and you can start with an actual torus here and you can plug this and you can use the matrices here you can use vector p to quickly make arrangement this one can be quite slow this is like only 64 Torus, right? It's already slightly slower, um, and you can you can randomize. Seems a little bit simpler, and this one is a little bit slower, depending on your computer. Uh, maybe you, your computer can handle a thousand objects at the same time, or you can merge it. Merge will make it a bit faster, but a better recommendation is to use instancing so there's this object instancer also in spreadshop so we can start with with an object maybe a torus so let's get rid of all, all of this so we start with a torus you know we're gonna grab, grab this actually from this guy and we're gonna create matrices i will hide the this master one and I will use vector P 
um, there's a couple of where you can actually start with just random points plug this into the locations so we make 64 for now and scale it you see how how fast the performance is and you you can plug this into the axis of rotations and then give it a bit of angle so you get randomizations this probably can be randomized in the seed so this will give you kind of animations and you can actually randomize further here using randomizer maybe just plug this in to the axis so yeah you can animate this um, you can also instead of using randomized you can use the noise displays just plug in these points we don't need the polygon data you can just plug this in there and then animate the noise so that will give you animations one thing about spread chalk however in in order to bake it you probably need the help of animation nodes uh, so let me save this very quickly first before I lose this you need animation nodes because let's say we have like only 32 objects with spread chalk if you actually try to keyframe this guy you cannot keyframe on the next one uh, let me select one objects and if I select them and keyframe location rotation and scale and then suddenly spread chalk is not updating the position anymore so that's a kind of a pity let, let me do it properly so frame goes into this vector noise should have should have animations okay so if we want to bake this if I keyframe so it doesn't work it's only working if we are updating the nodes um, so this is not good so I just delete everything accidentally but if you are an using animation nodes it's gonna work actually maybe I don't know if you can actually select all and then just use F3 and bake actions maybe you can do this but we're gonna use animation nodes instead anyway so we have this alpha instance objects under alpha probably I should call it beta to, to make it better because our original objects is actually called alpha otherwise it's gonna clashing so beta let's go to collection info let's grab beta and we want to keyframe set keyframe animation nodes have this really powerful nodes to do keyframing okay so we're gonna perform this keyframing on all the objects so selecting these objects and tap w we can look through every object and we're gonna keyframe it enable keyframe and we want to select location rotation scale and then enable it so now what's gonna happen here animation nodes will drive whatever spread job is doing so if we save this and then go to overview and bake to keyframe these animations will will be keyframe so spread chalk is still doing the animations just like random or this is like a noise animation but it's a little bit fast 
but animation nodes is doing all the baking. Hopefully, hopefully this works. There we go. If we look at the graph editor, we can see it's uh, already been keyframed for each one of the objects. So that's uh, the basic of procedural animations. But of course, you, you don't just randomize or wiggling like just random animation like this. Most of the time, you want to make something that's a little bit more beautiful. So I recommend you to look up um, like kinetic sculpture or things like kind of animated wooden um, sculpture or like, like a toy that rotates. Those, those are usually like a procedural animations, mechanical procedural animations, for example, like a, like a clock or maybe like a, like a musical box that you open and you suddenly have something that's spinning or any, any animatronics actually is also kind of like a procedural animations, including the clock, mechanical clock, that's a, an example of beautiful procedural animations, I guess. So yeah, this guy, if uh, we are actually done with it, and this animation, if you actually file export, if you give it a material, and then file export as USD, this is for the Pixar animation thing, for Apple USDZ, you buy. Anyway, you can export that thing and you, you're gonna get a result as instance. Unfortunately, it crashes, it shouldn't. I know why, it's, and just export as it is. So let me blender. But I, I worked on it a little bit last night. Uh, here's an example. Yeah, this is like uh, just torus rotating on its axis. This is also procedural animation, slightly more interesting, even though it's just rotating bunch of objects in array, rotating on its axis. Uh, yeah, you get the idea anyway. So that's the basic of kind of like a procedural animation. Just work on the transformations of the objects, of a uh, array of objects copy. Um, so that's uh, pretty much it. Hopefully this is more um, useful than my previous videos in, in terms of explaining procedural animations. So yeah, if you want to bake it, you need um, animation nodes if you want to bake from Spare Chalk. But uh, yeah, it's a Spare Chalk and animation nodes have different, kind of like a different thinking slightly different ways of working but they are actually very similar I like to work with stretch of more often because stretch of have heaps of generators and on top of this actually you can plug in all kind of different parameters for each one of the attributes here so you can have super random torus all right yeah that's pretty much it I think I talked too long already thanks again for tuning in and I'll see you next time thank you bye